All right. All right, my pedals are going under the water. Oh, I'm a downstroke. And my shoes are soaked. Oh. Hey guys, bike blogger here. Rain, rain. Go away, come again another day. This is another rainy day. been raining a lot lately this is the wettest month on record actually last month it's July 2015 now uh, yeah last month we got over 13 inches of rain way more rain than we need average is like four inches five maybe six so we got like more than double easily in the month of June. Squeaky brakes. I gotta clean those. <clears throat> yeah, this rain just doesn't let up. It's, uh, I'll try to remember to wipe the lens here. On my way to work, it's, uh, just after lunch time. <clears throat> Yeah, it was raining really, really hard this morning. It slowed down now, thankfully. But another big storm is coming. So, fortunately I'm dry right now, but just getting a little wet. Uh, probably get soaked on the way home tonight though, unless I can wait out the storm. Let's wait for these knuckleheads. I gotta be turning sometime soon. It's going left. Uh, I could go right, but I'm not gonna pass him on his right. Not a safe thing to do. Alright, here we go. I wanted to go right there on the road on the road again 21 22 miles an hour twenty three miles an hour want to start getting over if it's safe to do so and it is Make a left up here. Signal and turn. Up at Atlanta or whatever it's called. It's not called Atlanta, it's called Atlanta. It's a weird name. Probably pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, so. It's just been raining so much. My backyard's been flooding. Uh, that train stopped up there on the, on the hill. I wanna get like some rain barrels to collect some of the rain water off my roof. But I did the, a calculation on it and it's like, even just for, you know, one section of roof, say it's like 250 square feet, and uh, stop here, wait for the car. For like 250 square feet, if you get like an inch of rain, which is a lot, but it can happen in a day, especially in June, especially this June, make a left here. Yeah, the train just stopped right there. 
what's up with that? Why ain't the train going anywhere? I think, uh, I think the train stopped because it's some sort of scheduling thing. It's not necessarily that they have to stop. It's someone else has stopped down the line somewhere. Anyway, yeah, so I was looking in the rain barrels, but like the common size is 55 gallon. And you can fill up a 55 gallon rain barrel real quick. So you need multiple of them. Look a left here. Uh, you can get bigger ones like 150. Those things are expensive though. Even the $55 rain barrel is like, I don't know, 80 bucks. That's a lot for a barrel, but it's supposed to be, you know, it makes sense. It needs to be coated with something or treated with something. So, you know, the, the water it collects doesn't get really nasty as it just sits outside in a hot barrel in the sun. But still, yikes. I imagine most of that is because of the cost of shipping it wherever. You know, because most packages you ship, I think, they're not, the, the cost to ship isn't necessarily determined on the weight. Just like when you got an airline, it's determined by the uh, dimensions or dimensional weight, as it's sometimes called. Which is, uh, you know, if you got a really wide or long item, you're going to have to pay extra. Even if it's like a really lightweight plastic barrel. We're good. Let's get over. I see a dog up there. I must have missed the person. Unless it's a dog. Okay, there's a person. Ugh. I don't like a... I don't like... Wild dogs. Fortunately, you don't really see many of them around the suburbs or the city. 22 miles an hour. It's very cool today. It is, uh, it's like 63 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's, you know, like the second week in July, which is summertime. So this is like really weird. And tomorrow's gonna be like the same with more rain forecast. And uh, let me stop for a second here actually. This is Deer Creek. I'm on the uh, on the creek here. And it's pretty high, the water that is. Set my bike down for a second. Yeah, so there's the there's the water. It's running pretty high right now. Uh yeah, the trains stopped up there too, it looks like. On the bridge above. Yeah, but this is Deer Creek. I'm on the Deer Creek Greenway on in uh, Deer Creek Park in Maplewood, Missouri also. Actually, it's Deer Creek Park, Webster Groves over there. Deer Creek Park, Maplewood, Missouri over there. It's the same park name, just different cities. So, yeah, it looks to be running pretty high. So a lot of uh, smaller creeks and my bike, of course, the uh, Diamondback Honjo Comp. Got my light on, okay. It's a nice light. I always run a light, even in the day. Or most especially when it's uh, overcast or raining like today. Um, Deer Creek is a large creek. It's probably one of the largest creeks in the St. Louis area. And a lot of smaller creeks dump into it. Here's a big puddle. And, and then the Deer Creek dumps into, is it River De Pere or maybe just directly into the Mississippi River? So yeah, it's flowing, it's flowing pretty high. I don't know exactly what the, uh, how high it is right now, but I'm sort of watching to my left here to see some trucks moving around. Hope they don't come on this pathway here. There's a, there's a school bus over there too, you can see it. 
I want to go under the bridge uh, to get across the street, except I'm wondering if the bridge is going to be like totally flooded underneath it, in which case I need to stay up here and cross the street, which I think I might do, or I might go ahead and risk it. Let's see. See, you see there's a sign saying don't go down there, but we're going to be rebels. Mud on sidewalk. Let's be rebels here. Let's see, last time I went down here, it was pretty nasty. Yeah, look at that. There's still water down here. I don't know how deep this water is. Okay. All right. All right, my pedals are going under the water. Oh, I'm a downstroke. And my shoes are soaked. Oh, why'd I do that? For you guys, of course. Oh man, we're gonna stop for a second. <laughs> Dang it. Woo, bike looks okay. Uh, quick tip, when you're riding in rain, there's a chance you can get water stuck in your frame. You wanna open up the seat post of the head tube or the crank and let it out. But you can also get water stuck in your wheel rims. So now that I just went way under all that water back there, I might have to take off my tires later and see if I got a bunch of water stuck in them by any chance. And my shoes are soaked. My shoes went completely under the water. So, ah, living life to the fullest. All right, let's go. So yeah, what I should have done or what you know I'll do in the future when it's so wet and rainy like this is I will uh, just cross the road like I said above ground not underground not under the bridge it's no big deal it's just nice to be able to go through there because you can cut you know you don't have to deal with the intersection you just keep going it's one of the perks of being a bicyclist except when it's a day like today and it's just submerged. I need a submarine down there. So, one other little topic today. Oak tree wilt. It's a disease for that oak trees get. One of my trees has it. Makes me sad. Also known as just oak wilt. Uh, it affects oak trees. Basically, the top half of the tree just goes dead. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where the disease comes from. If I had to guess, it'd be an insect, because it does. It is transferred from tree to tree by insect or root. Um, what do I want to do here? We'll make a left here. And uh, yeah, my tree has it, so I need to cut it down. And that's another one of my gripes. It, it costs like a thousand bucks to cut down a full-size tree, in case anyone's wondering. A thousand bucks US. So, that's like a whole new bicycle. A nice bicycle. It's the cost of owning a home. So, that makes me a little sad. So, we're going to have to do that, I think. Yeah, it's a shame, too. But, you know, you don't want it spreading to other trees. I got some other oak trees. Hopefully it won't affect, infect them, but it could very well. Because it can affect like a 100, 100 foot radius or something around where the diseased tree is. And uh, a road or a sidewalk doesn't stop it. It's all underground. So, so yeah, that's a little depressing. I like trees. Self-proclaimed tree hugger here. <clears throat> so all those people straight ahead across the street no one has a signal on so I can only assume they're going straight which means I need to yield to them unless I get a left turn signal and I did get a left turn signal so no worries don't need to yield to them I'm going to get in the far right lane so faster traffic can pass on the left traffic travels on the right in this country, right side of the road. So, I'm gonna go up here now.
Almost back to work. Almost to work here. <clears throat> yeah, my, my feet are soaked. I got fresh socks at work, so that makes, that's good sense. However, I do not, I do not have, you know, like a fresh pair of cycling shoes at work. However, I do have an extra pair of shoes you know, like dress shoes or whatever at work. So that's no problem. I'll be fine at work. But what am I going to do when I go home, you know? I have wet... I might have dry socks, but I have wet shoes. What do you do? A couple options. Grab some paper towels from the bathroom. Stuff them in the shoes. It will cause it to... Let's go left here. It will cause it to dry faster, quite a bit faster. Keeps the good form on the shoe, too. That's a quick tip for uh, when you're jogging out in the rain as well. When you get back, stuff some newspaper or something in them. And they'll keep their form and they'll dry quicker that way. Uh, uh, can't tell if there's water in the rims or not. So we'll find out when we uh, get back to... Uh, back to uh, home later tonight take a peek because like I said you know I can go through the get into the rim somehow somehow you know under the in the spoke holes or whatever but uh another thing you can do to sort of dry your shoes or whatever when you get into work if you got a little heater or a little fan by your desk if you work in an office sort of environment you can uh, put it next to that let it dry let it dry you know make sure you have the air blowing toward your buddy in the other cubicle because you know you don't want to be smelling any of that and then uh, then you'll have some nice dry feet on the way home unless it's also raining on the way home Okay, super nice there, letting the guy go. Not all cyclists are like that. You gotta watch out for us. We blow stop signs and stop lights. Ha 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 ha. See you guys next time. Be safe out there. Use a light. Uh, the way to prevent water from penetrating into your frame in the first place is just make sure all the interfaces are greased properly and, you know, greased every year or whatever, uh, re-grease stuff, because uh, as long as you have stuff well greased, it shouldn't be an issue. Um, water shouldn't really be penetrating your bike as long as you're not doing anything crazy like me. <laughs> so... Um, Let's go ahead and tip this, I guess, in the bike stand. Um, I don't usually do this in the bike stand, but let's go ahead and tip it up here. Oops. And nothing came out, so I think we're good. Thanks for watching. Lightning.